Arkansas Republicans call for their party's presidential nominee to apologize. A federal judge takes action against attorneys for abusing the court system. Two officials from two of the state's largest universities step down, and the state takes in less than was forecast, but still more than the previous year. Arkansas Week is next. Arkansas Week is made possible in part by the Arkansas Times, keeping you informed by covering people, events, and politics in Arkansas. By FM 89, KUAR in Little Rock, with in-depth news reporting, analysis, and discussion each weekday. is Arkansas Week. And thanks for joining us. I'm Michael Hiblin, News Director of 89.1 KUAR NPR in Little Rock, and I'm sitting in for Steve Barnes this week. A lot to discuss, and joining me in the panel is Gwen Moritz. She is editor of Arkansas Business. Steve Bronner is an independent reporter, and Hoyt Purvis is a professor emeritus just resigned from the University of Arkansas. Not res resigned, <laughs> sorry, resignation is on the mind. <laughs> Retired from the uh, University of Arkansas where he was a uh, journalism and political science professor. But we've uh, had a couple of scandals this week at uh, the state's two largest universities. Gwen, uh, first at uh, ASU. The uh, chancellor stepped down this week after uh, a couple of audit reports found uh, a lot of problems. Yeah, and I, I had not actually used the word scandal on it, but maybe that fits. The, um, the, the first audit report came out a week or so ago uh, in which uh, Chancellor Hudson uh, seemed to be uh, manipulating a particular job uh, in order to make sure that his wife kept it and kept it at a salary uh, that was uh, higher than really what had been um, uh, kind of anticipated for that position. And I, you know, that seemed really um, self-serving uh, in a way that was uh, unseemly at best for someone who's, who's already making $360,000 a year and getting a house provided and a car provided and a lot of other perks um, to, to try to make sure that his wife was the one who kept a job that Frankly, the audit suggested she wasn't doing very well. Uh, and then uh, yesterday, uh, more stuff came out. And um, that, in, in the meantime, he had resigned because he obviously knew that the, the this other shoe was about to drop. And uh, this one job was not uh, the only um, incident in which he was apparently using his position in ways that were I'm not sure the word is self-dealing, but maybe just self-serving. And so. this all came to uh, light with uh, problems in the uh, study abroad program. Yes, that's the, the program that his wife was running um, as a part-time employee, uh, being paid uh, an average of more than $40,000 a year uh, when, when, the pro when they decided to make the, the job full-time uh, Chancellor Hudson learned that she couldn't be a full-time employee who reported to him. So although 14 other people had applied for that job, he just canceled plans to fill that job full-time and so that because his wife could keep it if it was not a full-time job. And, and the, the details on it, like all these things, that's where the devil is. Uh, but in, the, the overarching theme seems to be that he used his position uh, for his benefit, for his wife's benefit, to try to get uh, tuition discounts for his child at, with other colleges, uh, to reward family friends with uh, no bid uh, contracts, that sort of thing. And then this latest audit even suggested might have uh, broken the law. Yep. Uh, but the uh, there was a meeting with the uh, ASU system president Charles Welch, and uh, after that, then they decided to uh, he would resign. He put out a real brief statement. And the things that he's accused of, like Gwen said, it, at, at first it doesn't seem to rise to the level of scandal. It appears to be relatively, you know, 
things that were more not gray, they were on the wrong side, but it didn't, it wasn't huge. He, he was trying to, uh, you know, steer some business toward a company called Multisense that he had a long time relationship with and was actually on the board of directors, or at least he's accused of this, let me, let me say that. But all together, there, it just seems to have been way too many cracks in the foundation. And uh, so ultimately he's, uh, he's resigned. And uh, no severance pay, just uh, getting whatever vacation hours he had accrued. And then get out of the house. And then get out of the house, 45 days to uh, be out of the uh, house. Meanwhile, uh, in Fayetteville, we had the uh, head of the, uh, the fundraising division up there uh, reach a settlement to uh, leave there. Uh, this comes in a troubled uh, department up there, uh, but uh, you had the chief fundraiser, Chris Wyrick, uh, agreed to a mutually agreed upon uh, uh, resignation, and uh, he does get uh, a uh, four months pay, but uh, another problem. That had been a, a problem division up there, the advancement division at UA, uh, two, what, probably three years ago or so. Uh, it uh, turned out that there was just a complete breakdown in budgeting there. But nothing, uh, but it, it just, it, I would have called that incompetence. There was not any theft or you know, any money missing or anything like that. It was just budgetary incompetence. And, um, and the head of the department was let go or not renewed. Um, and Chris, Chris Wyrick came in to, uh, to take that position. We have a new chancellor up there. I really see this as, as kind of a, a high profile departure, but nothing like the ASU case. I don't, I don't, I mean, we're talking about them together because they're both high profile academic departures. I don't see these two as, yeah. as really comparable. This was uh, uh, simply uh, the chancellor, uh, Joe Steinmetz said, uh, he right. thought new leadership was needed. Right. And, you know, that's, that's entirely different than, than somebody, an audit finding that they've uh, just uh, had a pattern of abusing their position. I don't think that's the case in this. Um, you know, the new chancellor comes in, he may not feel like uh, every person he inherited was the right person on the right seat in, on the bus or whatever, and I think that's more the case here, but, you know, I'm not, obviously don't have any, uh, you know, deep insight into that. We don't know a whole lot about this, to be honest, at this point. Uh, we do know that the University of Arkansas has had a lot of success raising money. Uh, it has you know, they're in the middle of, a, or they're beginning a, 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 an effort to raise a billion dollars. And in the so-called quiet rate for phase, they've raised half of that already. I don't know how much of this is due to uh, Mr. Wyrick, uh, but the University of Arkansas, at least in that department, it, it's been troubled lately, but they, it does raise a lot of money, both uh, in academics and as we all know, athletics. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, move on to uh, new revenue numbers for July. We started the uh, fiscal year a little bit below what was expected, still uh, more than uh, uh, the uh, previous year. Yeah, uh, up by almost a million dollars from the same month a year ago, but down from projections. And um, the uh, uh, Department of Finance Administration, whatever you want to say about state government, they do sometimes an amazing job of projecting uh, how much is going to be raised. This time they were a little bit down, uh, fell short by $8.2 million. Uh, Governor Hutchinson said this is just part of the natural fluctuations, nothing to see here. And of course the state government does have a surplus this year. I think it's 177 once, million. Yeah, 77 mm -hmm. million. So at this point, uh, no alarm bells. State Treasurer's Office announced this week that it had, that uh, its uh, investment revenues are, are doing well too. So. We'll have to wait and see uh, if this is a canary in the coal mine, and if this, <laughs> we have other uh, revenue issues, or if this is just, uh, um, you know, overly optimistic projections, again, more than last year. So no alarm bells yet. Uh, and, you know, recently Arkansas was listed as having the fastest economic growth in the country, uh, which numbers that were disputed, but that was the what was found. So we'll just have to wait and see where we are. Yeah, one thing to remember is that our fiscal year just started July 1. This right. is the very first month of the fiscal year. Yeah, I, I think uh, you can't read a whole lot into what's happened so far, but on the other hand, as Steve indicated, there's, there's certainly no major reason for concern because by and large, uh, 
the Arkansas economy, while n not uh, at, at great heights, is, seems to be sort of bobbing along uh, as, as best uh, we could expect in what is overall a, a somewhat mixed uh, economic scene. Yeah, and uh, nationally, we got uh, new numbers today, uh, <coughs> job growth uh, significant. Ex exceeded expectations there. So, you know, just and a few days ago, we had some GDP figures that were not all that encouraging, and now we get job growth uh, that, that's uh, quite above, uh, quite a bit above what uh, most of the experts anticipated. Gwen, this week we had a federal judge reprimand uh, five attorneys mm -hmm. uh, for their conduct in a uh, class action case. Uh, you guys have been reporting on this uh, uh, from the beginning. In fact, right. the judge learned uh, that uh, the yeah, case had been uh, settled in state court through uh, your paper's reporting. Yeah, this is a really uh, complex case. Again, it's the, the details are uh, important in the in the big scope of it, but mainly for the rest of us, it's just important to, to realize that uh, five attorneys, uh, two of them from Arkansas, John Goodson, who's a UA trustee, uh, the, uh, and his law partner from Texarkana, Matt Keel, uh, plus three out-of-state attorneys were found to have acted in bad faith when they moved a class action case out of uh, Judge P.K. Holmes's federal court in Fort Smith and into the Polk County Circuit Court just to settle it on terms that they that Judge Holmes says they knew he wouldn't have approved because the terms were good for the defendants, the USAA uh, insurance company. The terms were very, very good for the, uh, the plaintiff's attorneys in it. And everybody got something uh, out of it, but it was not very good for the actual victims in this class action who were the USAA policyholders. Only 4% only of them jumped through all the hoops necessary to get their piece of the settlement, uh, but the attorneys got paid promptly. And Judge Holmes learned about this case from uh, some award-winning reporting in Arkansas business. And, um, uh, and we've been, uh, you know, we were surprised to learn that he didn't know it. But uh, he didn't, and he, uh, he cracked down on these uh, attorneys, maybe not as much as he had threatened to. And in, in fact, he found that there were uh, 10 other attorneys that, uh, that had, uh, had some misconduct in it. Uh, but not to the level of bad faith, and so he did not reprimand or sanction them. Uh, but, f but five of these attorneys, uh, who are some of the most successful, uh, most active class action attorneys, uh, have been told, you just can't do that. You cannot move around and what they call forum shop, fi find a, a friendlier uh, courtroom uh, and a friendlier judge uh, in order to get a settlement that basically does very little for your clients. Yeah, this would have gotten a whole different level of scrutiny had the settlement been followed. Exactly. In, in fact, uh, a similar case, uh, they knew Judge Holmes had uh, made them uh, change their settlement so that it was more favorable to the to the um, uh, victims or to the the class of plaintiffs. Uh, so he knew that they knew how he looked at at these cases and they moved it out of his court and into a friendlier court where it was in fact uh, approved without any questions. So this um, this thing is really, uh, you know, it's, it's complicated, it's a very esoteric area of the law, but for uh, attorneys around the country uh, are on notice uh, that this kind of, uh, that judges are going to be looking for this. Um, the judge, the uh, judges in Arkansas all know that who the attorneys were that were involved in this, even the ones that were not uh, reprimanded. And um, we're hopeful that it will actually make a fundamental change in the way class action law is practiced, at least in this, uh, in this area, so that uh, it will be more about the victims and less about the attorney fees. And the Secretary of State's office is actually, as we speak, counting signatures for a ballot proposal that would limit, that among its provisions would limit attorney's fees. Uh, this case, we'll have to see if they have enough signatures to be able to, to be on the ballot. Um, this case would probably be, um, at least whether or not it would be affected by the initiative, one more marketing tool for supporters of tort reform to say that you know, it would limit that kind of 
fees to about 33% of the total judgment. And worth noting, too, you mentioned uh, Attorney John Goodson. He is the husband of uh, Arkansas Correct. Supreme Court Justice Courtney Goodson. Correct. Uh, and on the topic of uh, election matters, uh, Steve, we have uh, uh, county clerk's offices around the state who are now having to uh, verify uh, a list of uh, potential felons that should be removed from voter rolls uh, and anyone uh, who apparently there are a lot of errors in this list, but it's up to being left up to county clerks to uh, find these errors. So the Secretary of State's office requested from the Arkansas Crime Information Center a, a, a listing of um, felons, which were then sent to the county clerks. Um, this is supposed to be done to determine if they're still eligible to vote. Uh, the problem is that the Information Center did not, um, did not keep a record of those felons who have had their voting rights restored, which means that uh, at this point, um, it's always up to the county clerks to determine that, but this is like a new wave of information that they're going to have to go through uh, before the September school elections, which are coming up in a month. And it's added a, a whole list of, uh, of duties uh, to the county clerk's offices to try to determine who has, uh, you know, who, who should be voting. Uh, there are concerns that people will not be allowed to vote who should be able to vote. And there's a lot of scrambling going on, and, and, and basically, um, we're going to have to wait and see who, if anybody's turned away, that shouldn't have been turned away. And this is, uh, you know, uh, obviously, it's uh, upsetting if someone uh, goes to the polls and find out they can't vote. Especially because the, these felons, I think, in most cases, have had to, to take action in order to get their voting rights restored. I mean, they have proven that they finished, they've paid all their fines, that they've, that they've finished any, uh, any penalties for their previous crimes. Um, and, you know, now they've go gone through that and it could be that they've, they've been disenfranchised anyway. And uh, we've gotten anecdotal reports about people uh, receiving notices in the mail and uh, things that are really easy to uh, toss aside, don't necessarily even look. Uh, official, you had uh, one story. Well, it wasn't about that, but yeah, you know, some sometimes we need to look closer at our mail. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, we uh, heading into the uh, November presidential election, and uh, it's been a rough week to say the least for uh, Donald Trump. Even the uh, Republican senators from Arkansas have had uh, harsh uh, words for. Uh, in well, particular, <laughs> comments regarding the family of Mr. Uh, Trump continues to march to the beat of his own drummer. Uh, <laughs> some people might say it's a loose cannon, <laughs> not a drum. But yes, uh, one of the uh, incidents uh, uh, among the many uh, controversies to which uh, uh, Mr. Trump has become attached uh, involved uh, the family, the, the father in particular, of. Uh, a Muslim American uh, soldier who was killed uh, in Iraq uh, a dozen years ago, I think. And of course, he made an uh, extraordinary uh, appearance before the Democratic National C Convention last week and uh, got uh, a lot of attention. Uh, and uh, in the case of uh, Trump, uh, he's Trump, Mr. Trump seemed to, to uh, attack uh, or to certainly be very critical of, uh, of Mr. Khan, who, who the father who, who made the speech, uh, and uh, the, the controversy has continued since that time. Uh, among others, Senator Cotton from Arkansas uh, was critical of, of Trump for his, uh, in effect, his criticism or attack on this Gold Star family, and other members of the uh, Arkansas uh, delegation uh, have have also. Uh, been critical, as, as have many, many others, in fact, uh, uh, pretty much the entire leadership of the Republican Party. One of now uh, just a, a number of uh, incidents uh, in which uh, uh, Trump uh, seems to, <laughs> to, to generate controversy wherever he goes, whatever he says, whether it's, you know, babies or whatever it might be. Uh, and, uh, of course, at the same time, uh, while there have been some some uh, developments that might have uh, generated uh, more criticism of uh, 
of Hillary Clinton, that's sort of all been uh, on, on the sideline. And at the same time, uh, we, we have to make note of the fact that uh, although I don't think we can attach great significance to polls at this point, nonetheless, uh, most of the polls, the national polls now show Hillary Clinton with a double digit lead, in some cases as much as 15 points. And uh, yes, yeah, Senator Cotton said that uh, Trump should uh, apologize to the family. Uh, Senator uh, Bozeman also said that uh, the comments were, I think his words were out of line. Right. You know, Senator Cotton spoke to the Republican National Convention for about seven minutes and said the word Trump once. And it was in the context of the words Trump Pence. That was it. <laughs> the Trump Pence ticket, basically, and that's all he said. So, um, fair to say that I think that Senator Cotton and Donald Trump come from different places. Uh, Senator Cotton insists he still supports Donald Trump. Uh, spoke to reporters the other day after the Political Animals Club and said that, you know, uh, the, the Republican Congress will send, uh, you know, bills to increase defense spending. Uh, Donald Trump will sign it. Hillary Clinton won't. Uh, you know, Donald Trump will appoint more Supreme, more conservative Supreme Court justices. Hillary Clinton won't. So he, he still believes that, that, uh, that uh, Trump's the better choice. Senator Bozeman definitely believes that. Um, Senator uh, Connor Eldridge, his opponent, does not think so, obviously, the Democrat. Uh, but at the moment, uh, Republicans are still standing behind um, Donald Trump with very few exceptions. Yeah. But, Toy, you mentioned he's missed several opportunities this week where he could have gone after Hillary Clinton and is not listening right. to his campaign. Right. Again, he just uh, seems intent to... Uh, to be the, the agenda setter, even if nobody else is following his agenda. <laughs> and uh, it, certainly there, there have been some issues that have come up that, that have raised questions, potential problems for, for uh, Hillary Clinton, but uh, that's gotten very little notice because uh, we have this uh, incredible uh, sort of ongoing, uh, I, I refer to it, a, a, you know, as a, he's a serial subject changer. I mean, he just, <laughs> Uh, and he gets, I mean, you look back at the history, there's so many of these things we don't even remember in, anymore uh, that he's, you know, whether it's the criticism of, of John McCain and, you know, that's bubbled back up now as an issue, but, uh, you know, all the way back to the, uh, the birther, the, the issue, the judge issue, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, and that uh, sort of keeps him in the spotlight, but it doesn't necessarily redound to his benefit. Yeah. Gwen? Yeah, we're seeing um, a very few Republicans actually come out, not in Arkansas, but very, uh, in, in, a, across the country, a very few Republicans actually come out and, and say, I'm with her, I'm voting for Hillary Clinton. Uh, more you're seeing Republicans saying, I'm not voting for Trump. They don't quite go so far as to say, I'm with Hillary but I'm not, I can't vote for Trump. There's quite a few of that, those. Uh, I believe the Washington Post is keeping a running list mm -hmm. online of, of Republicans who are disavowing their party's uh, nominee. But I don't see why any Arkansas Republican even feels the need to, to mix in that. Trump, I don't see any chance of him not winning Arkansas, and I don't see any chance of, uh, of it hurting uh, Republicans in Arkansas, Republican uh, candidates and and, uh, and elected officials, uh, just to stay out of it. I, d I don't I don't know why. Uh, maybe if they're just you know pushed against the wall and and with mics in their face, they they have to say something. But man, if I could avoid it, I would. I don't uh, I don't see it hurting them, and I don't see any benefit in in uh, getting into it. Yeah, and as you. Uh uh, reported, you know, Senator Cotton just simply said America would be in better shape with uh, a Republican president and a Republican Congress. Uh, and, and, and I think Gwen's right that Trump is going to win Arkansas. There are some couple of, a couple of wild cards. There are now a number of potential third-party candidates on the ballot in Arkansas, including a group called Better for Together. No, Better for America. Excuse <laughs> me, Better for America, which was started by a Mitt Romney donor, and they are looking for a more acceptable Republican uh, candidate that would be on the ballot in a number of states. And if that candidate is a credible person, which we'll wait and see if, that, if even they could even find someone, 
then that would be that might throw a little a monkey wrench into the whole proceedings. But at this point, still, it looks like it's all you know. Trump's going to win Arkansas. And worth noting, the uh, Green Party is having its national convention this weekend in Houston, Texas. They're hoping to attract some uh, Bernie Sanders supporters who maybe aren't uh, happy with Hillary Clinton. Uh, but Hoyt, you spent a lot of years in Washington. I mean, do you, have you ever well, seen a... Uh, the, the, you know, the, the question I get everywhere I go is, have you ever, you know, is this the, the craziest thing you've ever seen? Has there ever been anything like that? like this, and the answer is no. There's never been, certainly in my experience, but if you look back in history, I'm, uh, somehow something pops into mind. Governor Pence the other day, the vice presidential candidate uh, with Mr. Trump, said, uh, uh, I really don't, uh, I really don't like, I, I really don't believe in name calling. Well, <laughs> you know, it, where are you gonna start with the name calling <laughs> list? Because, you know, literally seconds later, uh, after he made those comments, uh, Mr. Trump was uh, talking about crooked Hillary and uh, whatever uh, you know other uh, names that he could come up with for some some of the other critics uh, that he's uh, encountered. So uh, it's um, I would say this, although Hillary Clinton has a substantial lead in the polls right now, given the nature of the current political climate, I don't think anybody should take anything for granted at this point. The newly retired Hoyt Purvis, <laughs> Gwen Moritz, and uh, Steve Bronner, thanks for joining us. And thanks for watching, spending part of your weekend with Arkansas Week. I'm Michael Hiplin. Thank you. Arkansas Week is made possible in part by the Arkansas Times, keeping you informed by covering people, events, and politics in Arkansas. By FM 89, KUAR in Little Rock, with in-depth news reporting, analysis, and discussion each weekday.